a big idiot. <laughs> the biggest idiot on the podcast. Oh, are you this all right, week, Marcus? Yeah. Are you, okay? are you having a problem with your brain? <laughs> Do you want to get a calculator from the pound shop, you penis? I think I'm fine. It was a perfect point. <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean the the situation is absolutely maddening at Arsenal with, with the transfers. You, would, you know, everyone knows we need a striker. Everyone knows we need a defender. And I don't Takuma know. Takuma pers- Rosano. <laughs> yeah, such a wonderful Indeed. phrase. But yeah, um, so a friend of mine made a really good point about how ridiculous our transfers are. We after after Leon rejected a bid for um, Lacazette from West Ham, we then put in a lower bid. <laughs> After, after that, <laughs> like, what are we doing? What oh, are we doing? How, it's just making it up as they go along. How, it's absolutely phenomenal. I love the idea of Leon just just starting to CC Arsenal into their responses to West Ham. <laughs> yeah. You're not bidding for business. Oh, no. <laughs> we could do it for cheaper. This is not how it works. This is not how it works. Player of the year, uh, which Premier League club will go furthest in the Champions League? Maybe three relegated teams, as well. three relegated teams, mm, of yeah. course. How many willies? How many willies will be seen? Yeah, yeah. yeah has How to many go drones? On. How many willies get caught in the helicopter of the drones? I didn't want uh, any willy cat- categories because that's Pete's specialist subject, yeah. and mm. I think it's unfair. Yeah, well, that's a special one for Petey. <laughs> Before, know, before the football ramble started recording, you literally showed a video of me in the nude. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you're, that you have I mean, on your sorry, phone. Everyone, you're sorry. very much what? complicit in that. Though, sorry, aren't you? Yeah. What is your point? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone listening to this show has heard you for more than five minutes? Doesn't think you're the type of man who's naked quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> on camera. Yeah. So. I can remember. I can remember you two doing a video. You and Marcus. Well, I, yeah, Marcus clarify had to, this quickly. Marcus had to record it under a blanket. Yeah. And one had the blanket over him, so he couldn't see. You took all your clothes off. And, and there, was just, no, there was no one else I even there. I remember you resting your member on his shoulder while Marcus fell over, saying, "Pete, Pete, it's on you." Can I, can I just? Can I just? Say, my name's come up there a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, ladies and gentlemen, oh, good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I was always fully clothed. I wasn't complicit. I was disgusted. I wasn't complicit. I did not inhale. <laughs> Pathetic. You're on that. You're on that. And they didn't chase me, no matter how much I, I said they should. I did not have relations with that woman. <laughs> I did not get naked with those men. In your Oval Office. In my Oval <laughs> Office. <laughs> anyway, to, to sum up. Uh, I tell you what, this is, a, this is a cracker. This is a cracker. Hello, Gareth. Um... He says, uh, settle down, because it's a good one, uh-huh. and a long one. Uh, as masters of Keeganology, I suspect you may know the story of Keegan's 1974 trip to Belgrade already. I don't. No. no. But I only recently discovered it myself, so just in case you don't, I thought I'd share, and I'm so glad you did. In 1974, <laughs> England were due to play Yugoslavia as part of a European tour, so they flew to Belgrade from Bulgaria, where the last game had been played. At the time, Joe Mercer was caretaker manager, and it was safe to say that his attitude to players' behaviour and state of dress was somewhat informal. Lovely stuff. Uh, as a result, the plane ride was closer to what you'd expect from a stag do abroad rather than a professional football team, with the players in their best 70s fashion gear and the booze flowing. Although not for young Kevin Keegan. <laughs> who slept through most of the flight. Can I just say, I would love to have been on that flight. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> A little just, more finery. Yeah. <laughs> Puffing away on cigars. Yeah. Um, Perm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious. Uh, when they, uh, everyone's smoking. Everyone's smoking yeah. right down the flight. Uh, when they landed, the team discovered that the FA had forgotten that Sofia in Bulgaria and Belgrade were in different time zones, so their Yugoslavian minders weren't quite there yet. While Joe Mercer <laughs> and the other FA officials went off to try and find them, the players waited in the baggage area. Bored, Alec Lindsay of Liverpool jumped up on the lo- luggage conveyor belt and started mucking about, only to be told to get off by the other players. What they didn't know, that some... What they didn't know was that someone had already called security. Keegan, carrying two bags of souvenir pottery from Bulgaria... (laughs) You know where this is going? You know where this is going? ..had had done nothing more than sit down on the metal edge of the conveyor belt when Yugoslav security arrived and dragged him off to a back room. There, in his own words, he was forced to kneel like a prisoner of war while being punched, clubbed and kicked. He was then charged with sexually assaulting a stewardess, assaulting a security guard, disturbing the peace and causing an obstruction. Life in jail. Life. you got life. Luckily, by that point, the players had found Mercer and the FA, who themselves managed to uh, find Keegan and alert security as to who he was. The charges were dropped and an understandably sobbing Keegan was released. <laughs> Next day, still played in the England game and scored a last-minute equaliser. Oh. Peak Keegan. Oh. And, then, and then was punched. <laughs> Gareth, that was wonderful. 
Excellent. Oh, Brilliant. That's how you go if you set Spelzy off. Oh, he's, yeah. gone. he's done. Spelzy's he's done. done. God, how many more done. of these are there? Yeah. <laughs> I thought we knew all of them. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for your email. So we'll, we'll get wrong. to. If you want to get in touch, you can't, you can't leave it there because Mark isn't ready. All right, okay, I'll yeah. do one more. Uh, Tom Hodgson. <laughs> I'm putting your mic down. Tom <laughs> Tom Hodgson from Gateshead says, a big hi to the lads at the Ramble. That's kind of what you do with an email, I suppose. My yeah. highlight of the week is Sheerness's Stuart Crookshank taking a knock to the nose during a game. Luckily, luckily, luckily uh, for him, a tampon was available to suppress the bleeding as he went on in style to score a blinder in a 5-0 victory in the East Sheppey Sunday League. <laughs> I've attached a photo of Stuart in action, tampon and all. Everyone there agreed it was a bloody great game. I'll be honest, I wasn't <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> a, ma- a man put a tampon up his nose. Yeah, yeah. Good man. Good, yeah. <laughs> Was it Keegan? <laughs> no, he wouldn't have put it out there himself. No. No. Was he Was he beaten, kicked and clubbed? Marcus, yeah. Marcus, clubbed. Marcus, two bags of crockery. Yeah. Probably all smashed. smashed. All smashed. All smashed. All smashed. Like a great bra- wedding. The most breakable of all the souvenirs. <laughs> 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 Didn't realise until he got home, though. No. Yeah. Yeah. I got you a present. <laughs> 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 what do you mean you've left me? <laughs> I doubt you dissolved a stewardess. <laughs> oh, no, my never mind. Goodness. Wonderful. Oh. Keegan, oh. Keggy. Kigo. We're going to have to get out of here for my sake. Yeah. Any more for any more? Like that. Um, I genuinely do. I'm not just saying that to get you to buy it, although you should buy it. Um, <laughs> or pre order it. Yeah. Rory Fallow, um, this is the penultimate one, I think. He says, Bought a coffee in the stadium and light before kickoff, and the exchange was as follows Me, can I have a coffee with milk, please, mate? Him, yeah, would you like it black or white? Uh, yeah, just a coffee with milk, please. Yeah, but do you want it black or white? <laughs> and he finishes by saying, no wonder the club is in a fucking mess. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, they're absolutely um, brilliant. And one more. Uh, it was very hard to find. <laughs> um, next one up. I came like a hero and I left like a legend. <laughs> Was that Eric Cantona? <laughs> I've had nights like that. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> no, legend. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Not, not criminal. Hang on. I thought you said crying librarian. <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> They couldn't oh, play okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, one thing I noticed as well is that in the post-match interview, Antonio Conte had a sweaty top lip, which was even more intimidating. It, it was a look that said, "I'm terrifying," and I'm mm. also warmed up. Do you, think that was an, <laughs> do, you, do you think that was because Sean Dyche was going on about Conte before the game? Oh, not so much Conte, more about the whole British manager saying that they're hard done by and suggesting. That's all they talk about British managers, isn't it? Yeah. Just do some more coaching. Well, what they're it's, not, it's not British managers, it's ex uh, footballers who have young British sons that can't get in teams They've because of foreign players. Like, rah, rah, rah. Any British. Go abroad. Any do British, something. Let me. No. Any, <laughs> I think you're talking to you. Any, yeah, <laughs> any British man over the age of 40 in football, involved in football, seems to be on some sort of rota mm. where it's, they take their turn just to say that foreigners are annoying us and then yeah. they're, not, they're not good as they say they are. And if I had a different name, I'd be better. And blah, yeah. blah, blah, well, blah. If, if, I, uh, if I could bring it to the Football Rabble book in my manager section, in my manager chapter, um, you know, empirically, empirical evidence suggests that in the uh, Premier League era, uh, foreign managers have done a lot better than uh, English managers, yeah, especially because. because <laughs> well, England, Eating English, all the paella. English managers have done nothing. I mean, because the only British manager is Sir Alex Ferguson, who's done mm. something in the Premier League era. Dalglish. And Dalglish. Dalglish. Never, he never won it, though. He won the Premier League. Did he really? Blackburn. Oh, of course he did. Forgive Come me. On. I was thinking Liverpool. Sorry. Come on. Yeah, I, said, Boom. I still said English managers have not done. You're right. Very British much. managers are brilliant. <laughs> Scottish man Alan Shearer there you are <laughs> oh, yeah. exhibit A your honour uh, but, but it is true that, uh, like, like you say it's like oh, give us a chance give us it's, it's not like Antonio Conte has been managing you know uh, Piacenza or something no. and yeah. oh right, well, let's pick him from obscurity and give him the Chelsea job <laughs> he won the league repeatedly you had your Tim Sherwood <laughs> you had him exactly. and yeah. he's Tim Sherwood he, and, he's and, set us back <laughs> isn't he and you all liked him they all spend their yeah, time talking about it. I love him. Yeah. Who's going to be the guy that we put forward as the poster boy for the British managers? Yeah, Tim, we all like Tim. <laughs> Tim's a real <laughs> laugh yeah. about the place. Yeah. <laughs> Get oh, your own house in order. Tim, what have you done? <laughs> he might cost me a realistic long term prospect of getting a big job, but he does get the points in. <laughs> but, imagine, but imagine being like a decent young British manager going, oh, Tim, it's, it's, yeah. like, uh, Bla- Bla- it's like black managers in Paul Ince. Paul Ince is always yapping yeah, yeah. off. He's yeah. like, you're the worst <laughs> manager ever. Yeah. You don't represent us, you're rubbish. Uh, we yeah. might, oh, I'm sure we said this at the time but it was like when, when Ian Holloway was saying about Man United giving the job to Jose Mourinho and he was like why, why not give someone like Steve Bruce a go like, yeah. st- 
I've got a lovely idea as well. Do I need give, give them a go. Yes. Yes. Yeah. United are a charity. It's like got, yeah. it's like got one of those little uh, what those things you have those little foldy things that little, uh, little lasses have in schools. I try to they, they fold it up and they've got little kind of numbers in oh, them. Oh yeah, I don't like it. They've got the job. Yeah, uh, Eddie Howe. I don't know if anyone well, it's, really. It's kind of like a Steve Bruce. Bruce. It's, it's like an old for the kids there. I was going to say it's like <laughs> an old-fashioned magic eight ball or something. Come you, can on, imagine, you can imagine the board meeting at May night. I am not reporting Steve Bruce to the New York Stock Exchange. Today, <laughs> <or not. laughs> we are having Jose Mourinho, and that's the end of it. <laughs> Steve Bruce, yeah. give him a go. <laughs> yeah, just so he can confirm it. We all know anyway. I would, I would well, just like to give Steve Bruce a go. He looks like the human version of the cowardly lion. Yeah, with his swimming shorts on, his towel under his arm. Why I? I'm a big, <laughs> lovely blamange man. <laughs> but I would, what would happen if he did take over at Man United? Because obviously we're, we're well aware of the bruisey bonus, which is where he goes over, goes goes to Old Trafford yeah. with whatever team he's managing, mm. rolls over, gets his belly rubbed and gives yeah. away three points. <laughs> if he actually managed Man United, would they win every game or lose every game? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> I think it's, game, worth, it's worth a gamble. Oh, imagine when Man United played Man United reserves in the pre-season <laughs> oh. friendly. The game would go for... Maybe they'd spent a few quid. Mm. And that is the modern game, whereas... Years ago, they'd have thought, oh, this guy will get us promoted the next few years. Yeah. Clubs don't want the next few years. They want it now. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's obviously uh, what they've done. Speaking of the here and now, Neil Warnock's off uh, to a winning start at Cardiff City. Speaking of the if, old hat. If he, uh, Warnock gets a lot of stick, and not, you know, on this show included, and, you know, fine, he is a little bit of a, a bit of a what's-his-name, but... <laughs> if he no, gets, he's had to get out of the league. If he gets Cardiff promoted... Yeah. That'll be his eighth career promotion. That is, is impressive. impressive. That is amazing. Impressive. But he is a part of that classic group of English managers who have, you know, pretty decent record in the championship getting size up to the Premier League. And when yeah. they get to the Premier League, they are exposed. Yeah. Well, there were stories at, at QPR of, of how, you know, um, I forget which player it was, but there was someone who did an interview just talking about how he did, there were times where you, they'd look over at the dugout and he just, just didn't have a plan for when they were mm. getting battered. And I, I'll always have a certain amount of affection in my, in my, um, in my mind for, for Neil Warnock because once on the radio, uh, and I've got no particular beef with John Cross, the guy who writes for the Mirror anyway, mm-hmm. but it was very funny. John Cross was trying to, um, he was saying something about Neil Warnock and Neil Warnock was on the phone and Warnock did the most amazing sort of absolutely brilliant like uh, yeah. patronising of, of John Cross he just kept going yeah but the thing about John our John he loves, <laughs> he loves Arsenal does our John and it, when he talks about Arsenal he talks very very well and we like listening to him talk about Arsenal because he loves Arsenal our yeah, John yeah, yeah. but when it comes to other stuff <laughs> other, other f- parts of football. Yeah. It, was, it was so bad. He's got such a funny manner, Warnock, isn't I he? Do, I, I, it, was I a, do. it was a really patronising, but at the same time, quite good natured, yeah. big swinging of the dick around saying, Listen, <laughs> I've worked in the game for 40 years, pal. You yeah. leave me out of it. If Warnock was in the 70s, he'd probably have a league title to his name. Yeah, do you know would, what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and he is of yesteryear, and I do quite like that I, about him. I just love the way he kept calling him our John. I told you, yeah, that's class. Yeah. I told you, didn't I? I met him once in a, in, a, in a previous job, and he was managing Palace at the time. And he said, who do you support? And I thought, I, I thought to myself, oh, he'll, he'll love it if I say Palace and we'll have a little chat. So I just went, oh, I, you know, I, I sometimes go and watch Palace and all this sort of stuff, which is, which is a lie. And uh, <laughs> You lied to Neil Warnock. Yeah. And he went, uh, and he went, because uh, he just took, took over at Palace and uh, the, the club wasn't in a particularly good state. And it was brilliant because it just fed into it, to all that kind of stuff. And he took over and I said, oh, yeah, someone's going to watch Palace play. And he went, oh, we'll have a bit of faith, son. We're trying to sort it out. When I got in there, it was an absolute disgrace, but we're sorting it out now. You're going Saturday, are you? He was all like this. <laughs> but I reckon that if I had an opinion on, like a proper opinion on stuff like that, he probably would have listened. Yeah. On the match of the, or, or, or whatever league they were in, you know, the Football League show, yeah. whatever it would have been at yeah. the time, he'd have been like, well, I was talking to this lad the other day and he said I should have put him on the wing. So actually, I gave it a go. It was all right. Listen, lad, we we're playing three at the back today. <laughs> I spoke to a little chap, our Marcus. Our Marcus. Marcus. He's here today. He's here I don't to want to disappoint him. Yeah, he loves Palace as our market. <laughs> he's, love, never, he's never been. <laughs> I love that one. That was very good display. He, he was well, very good. The Spurs dropped points. They did away to West Brom. Although it was probably a point gain. Obviously, it was a, it was a, in a, a last minute yeah. goal from from Deli Ali. Deli Ali did miss a few chances, but you know that, that can happen because actually the goal he scored was was very well done, mm. considering that they were they were desperately looking for an equaliser. Mm. It's a lovely bit of craft from uh, from the young man. Um, Chadley scoring against his old club, yeah, standard. That was it's a proper happens, boost as well into the roof of the net. It was. Yeah. A, it's very satisfying a roofed goal. What about that thing Pulis said about well, Chadley? I mean, we we mentioned this in, in the Glasgow Live Show, but it's it's worth mentioning again. He absolutely startling admission on uh, I think it was Radio Five Live on on Saturday 
well, it, how he got uh, Chadley to uh, sign for West Brom. He got him down to the club to have a look, and he took him out. And in, in Pulis's words, he gave him a load of wine, took him back to the training ground, and Chadley signed without knowing what he was doing. Yeah, I mean, that that's, was, that's surely... not going to be good wine, either. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Yeah, Echo Falls or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's, yeah uh, that's surely tongue in cheek, though. I'm sure. Of course, it is. Actually. Hopefully, can I hopefully. just pull you up a second there, Jim? I, I think Pillars is more of a home home wine guy. You think he makes his I own think wine? He might do, yeah. Fortified wine. I think he might do, yeah, in the basement or something. I, I think that's a fair shout, yeah. actually. Yeah, mm, he's crushing the grapes between <laughs> yeah. forearm and With bicep, his fists rather than his feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He would very much enjoy crushing them under his cap, <laughs> still just screaming. <laughs> Sido, Sido, Sido doesn't even know why he's saying it anymore. <laughs> Can't remember. Put just in, in base, a fever. Put in the baseball cap. Tighter and tighter, so the juice just drips down. Yeah, you've got loads chin. of grapes underneath yeah, it, yeah. crushing them within yeah. it. <laughs> serious about the game. Yeah. Okay. It's, it'll take, take a bit of time, of course. Indeed. While we're in, uh, in, in, in the Far East, uh, although China is at Far East, you're getting on for it, certainly. Mm. Um, well, let's go to Thailand. Now, obviously, the king of Thailand died recently, mm. um, which, like, l- 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 let's be clear, the crux of what we're talking about is a man dying. So, obviously, that, that's, that's sad and all the rest and of it. And he was the longest serving monarch in the world at Of the course, time. yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, yours. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But this prompted football league officials out in Thailand to end the season three games early. Yeah. Now, again, obviously, a man's died, blah, blah, blah. That's, that, that, that's very sad. But two clubs were relegated <laughs> due to this with three matches left and had a chance of staying up. I mean, was Kevin King a manager one of them? Was Kevin King a all of them? Oh, wow. <laughs> Marcus well, has gone for a while now. I thought we had a good chance of staying yeah. up, but the, I would, the king died. I, w- I would love it if he pulled through. Yeah. <laughs> Should we see you in a bit, mate? Oh, dear. <laughs> you can just imagine the coach rock. We've got three games left. Two of them are winnable. Two of them are winnable, right? Well, we need. We can uh, nickel- I better take this call. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Outrageous. It is outrageous. <laughs> Richard Scudamore is rumoured to be mulling it over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love what Marcus has done. I'll just feel for you, Marcus. Yeah, he please. says, in, in the running order, he's written, laws in Thailand can be very strict when speaking out against, speaking out against anything to do with the royal family. Yeah. Is it? Apparently, a bit scared. Apparently, the League Cup will be decided by a lottery. <laughs> Incredible, absolutely incredible. Hey, Scotland was bad. And tell you what, if Kevin Keegan was managing one of the teams in a final being decided by a lottery, he would just leave. He finished third. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've lost my ticket. I've lost my. I've lost our ticket, boys. Third. Oh my goodness! Where to go? Apparently, Mm. apparently, the the clubs lodged an appeal, but after a meeting um, with all eighteen league clubs, seventeen agreed to end the season early. I love the fact one. I don't care if I get locked up. That one club. We're going to stay up this season. That one club had a couple of bags of crockery. Yeah. What happened was Keegan was managing a team that had a good chance of staying up, but we're in the relegation zone. And Kevin agreed to go and meet the um, the Thai the Thai king just just as a as a, as a nice <laughs> yeah as a nice like royal visit and then accidentally <laughs> killed him. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! <sighs> well, there we are with his team. Well, you know, I remember, remember I said to you last week that in the year 2016, um, Stoke have conceded three or more goals in the Premier League mm. uh, eight times. Yes. Nine times now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. They were so sloppy defending one of those. Sort of, I, I, I know there's, there's an idea that Stoke are, are, are suffering from the, the new rules about shirt pulling and, and all, all that sort of stuff, <laughs> right? But there's, there's no commitment to attacking the, the set pieces coming in against them. They're so vulnerable from the flanks. Um, Shea um, Given is now a rough approximation of a goalkeeper. It's, it's very sad to see because he was I'm fantastic not in his day. He was fantastic. He couldn't have done anything about three of the goals. My stomach's wrong me. I'm so sorry, everyone. Um, you couldn't have done about three of the goals? <laughs> well, two of the goals. Are you out of your mind? What do you mean? <laughs> one of Just them came... One half of, them, of the goals he was all right with. One of them was... Flo- they were floating balls into the six-yard box <laughs> all the day. Yeah. Shea Given was staying, staying yeah. home. Maybe he trusted you know his he defenders. He can use his hands. Maybe yeah. he, he trusted his do, defenders. He can do a lot of things about that. Shea Given might as well have had his armchair there. <laughs> Leave him <And> alone! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you let him alone! One thing, bread, say, boy. one thing I will say about him, though, fantastic Widow's <laughs> Peak. <laughs> Best Widow's Peak in the Premier League. Yeah. He got a fantastic oh, he's he's definitely peak. my hair hero, I yeah, think. Yeah. Definitely. 
Yeah. If what your hair would be like if it had a bit of commitment about it. <laughs> a bit of commitment. Yeah. Townsend. Uh, yeah, you can be sneaky yeah. about it. So Alan Pardew's still uh, still getting away with it, isn't he? Yeah, still... well, is he? Is anybody calling him on his rubbish? I, I love the what. thought of Gareth Southgate watching this, thinking, "Come on, Alan, <laughs> come on, just one People point, just get a point me for this, just just anything. Just get, Alan, just give me point. something. They are going to give me the job next <laughs> week, Alan. All right, time is running out. <laughs> You're away to Swansea next. You've got to do something there. I did my interview. I tried to set fire to the vlog's tie. <laughs> they still wanted me. I missed a penalty in the interview. <laughs> just to remind them. They told me to get the PowerPoint out, I'd punch the computer. Yeah. No, Alan, Steve Bruce can't get promoted, but in a week, <laughs> it's gone. It's not happening. But Palace struggling, fifth loss in a row. Chelsea have better players as well. Mm. Yeah. Is N'Golo Kante that good, though? I think <laughs> he's that good that he makes that much of a difference. I, I, think, I think Ranieri, I think what, what they've got at Leicester is season on, season off. That's yeah. what they're going to do. Well, like so a fat like glass you've got to take your hair off. Yeah, maybe. Leave maybe. a fellow. <laughs> Let the ground recover. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> they, they have, they have, pretend to be a farmer again. Yeah, exactly. Idiot. They, um, Peter! What? What's wrong with... of your petty political point scoring? Thank you very much. <laughs> What's wrong with Evis? I just think Evis has got to stop pretending that he's a farmer. Yeah. Tarmac what? it. What? He's a man in his 80s. He's a man in his 80s. <laughs> what are you this talking is about? This for Pete's pointless political palaver podcast. How is it, <laughs> how is it political? <laughs> Marcus, do you want me to bring up the speed? <laughs> Pete, Pete is referencing Michael Evis, the yeah. founder and I know, I know. Yeah, erstwhile until his daughter took over, runner of Glastonbury. I'm very aware of all yeah. um, And his pompous nature. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's, he's pompous, I'm just saying he's got to stop pretending it's, it's, it's a nightmare to get off that site when it's rains. I agree. Well, well the tarmac it. Don't go the weather, Pete, does he? No, but I it could agree. make it easier for people to get off. Pete, I agree, and I've had some very sternly worded thoughts about that, that festival, <laughs> but I would not resort to assaulting the man uh, personally. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the difference between me and you. <laughs> tarmac it. To be perfectly frank. If he's going to assault someone, <laughs> I'm going to tarmac. Pete, I'm you cannot tarmac, tarmac a paradise. pensioner. How many more times? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to see a tarmac pension. Come on, why? see, that's what happens. What? You, well, the thing is, you say why, you encourage it, yeah. and then it, before we know it, we're committing it's your naivety. group assault on an 80-year-old man. <laughs> The Pete's now tarmac. blaming Marcus for this. This, right, is, this will be in the YouTube ideas spreadsheet tomorrow. In the <laughs> tarmac to an 80 year old man. They smell lovely. I love the smell of tarmac. I do as well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the smell of tarmac as nice when it's coupled with burning pension of flesh? Yeah. <laughs> I and don't then, know. That's what we're going to find out. I've put the ideas yeah. right. If it's just Top Gear, we'll be doing this tomorrow. Is Pete having these thoughts, right? Is it really my fault that I asked him why? I mean, in a court of law, <laughs> in a court of law, no. is, is the guy going to say, right, well, you get three months as well because you did ask the question why? No, but I think you should hold yourself up to a higher standard. <laughs> I'm not asking him. You're the conditions. You're supplying the uh, catalyst. Yeah. You're the oxygen. I said why. I didn't say why. No. I'm, the, I'm the mold spores <laughs> in my bathroom. All I'm saying is Pete should not be encouraged on any level to go out and purchase a steamroller. <laughs> <laughs> There would be no steamroller. It would just be an applicant, a light dusting. So now you're not even doing the job properly. <laughs> a light dusting. <laughs> now you're cutting corners. You're of putting tarmac. That's like a half-assed tarring and feathering. No, no. To, to I think this is the quickest vault fast we've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the other day it was Bob Bradley to the Elgin Marbles in 20 seconds. Right, OK. It's up there. It's up yeah. there. All I'm saying is... It's been your depends life. Old, it depends how old they are. I mean, Hodgson is in, uh, advanced in years. I mean, obviously, say... Advanced in years are here. Would you be interested in being tarmac <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> so you're only up for it if they're into it as well. <laughs> Consent is important. Cons- yeah. Right, OK. When you ask them, are no, you, are sure you, are you at the wheel? Into account when it comes to sentencing, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you at the wheel of, of, of the steamroller, looking down on them? <laughs> he's not being, apparently he's not doing the steamroller. Yeah, I don't know oh, why you're obsessed right? with the steamroller. I- uh, it's only me. one part of yeah. the tarmacking process. Yeah, Marcus, what are you talking about? Yeah, <laughs> why else are there steamrollers? Sorry, Sorry to, to bring are you, back are this, you part Pete, of big steamroller? I just know you like machines. So if, <laughs> if not the steamroller, how are you going to do it? Like what do you mean? Him? You're still tarmacking someone. You have to flatten it down. No, no, the steamroller's just for the flattening to even oh, out yeah, on the I road. So. Yes. But, I mean, but how are you going to do it? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't feel confident <laughs> that I could tarmac a, a pensioner. I'd like to know how you'd do it. Lie him down and just scoop the tarmac upon it. Yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind hitting them with a flat bit of the shovel. Don't you? No. Okay, it's very but honorable. not steam rolling. Very honourable of you. That's cruel, unusual punishment. I very can, unusual. I can understand. Uh, there'll be documentaries made about you in the future. I yeah. think so. And your family will be ashamed Visionary. Of <laughs> Visionary <laughs> human tarmacker. Um, I, I think uh, Hodgson... Uh, 24 hours. <laughs> um, well, Pep Guardiola's certainly in the spirit of things. Mm. We, we, we'll come on to, to Pep and Man City, of course. Uh, David Moyes, not so much. No, mm. standard. Yeah. But it's it, partly is his fault, partly not his fault. Uh, if you had to take David out for the day to cheer him up, what would you do, Jim? Put him 
movie. Ah. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and when I was thinking about answering this question, <laughs> completely coincidentally, um, someone on Twitter, at Lebs, got in touch with me and said, uh, oh, I found this uh, funny interview with David Moyes from the 21st of August, which is, as we all know, the start of the season, mm-hmm. um, with, some, with some quotes from David Moyes, and I thought Sharon was part of this answer. Uh, David was asked um, wh- whether he thinks they're going to be in a relegation battle this season. In August? Mm-hmm. Why would that suddenly change? I think it will be a relegation battle. Oh, God. I don't think you can hide from the fact that it will be the case. People will be flat because they're hoping that something is going to dramatically change. It can't dramatically change. It can't. <laughs> Why would that suddenly change? Because of you, David. Because of this, the influence you can have. Jim, two weeks, your whole job. Two weeks into the season. <laughs> two games in. They just lost in Middlesbrough. Oh, Admittedly, God. a poor result. It can't so- dramatically change. It can't. <laughs> He's been proven right, hasn't he? Yeah. The joke's on. Yeah. Oh, still on him. What a prophecy. <laughs> the moisture drama. Not even September. Yeah. Which would be bad enough. Why would that suddenly change? Not suddenly. <laughs> You've got nine months. You've got nine months. You've literally got the whole season. <laughs> Always the same for everyone. You've got the whole season. Every manager gets the same. He's planning for a relegation battle in August. He's not even... It's like... You know Graham... I think it's Graham Sinessa's famous uh, comment when he was Liverpool manager. Don't look at the table till Christmas. Don't mm. worry about it. Focus on your own job. Do what you can do. Pick up as many points as you can. At Christmas, we'll talk about it. Moyes, 21st of August, <laughs> we're going down. Yeah. We're getting really good. Also, that didn't work for Mark Fish. No, it? it's so, true. That's absolutely true. That's yeah. true. Um, aim high. Aim as high as you can. And if you get a little bit less, yeah. then you've done okay still. So he's, he's aiming high for him is 18th. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> no, he's thinking, if I aim for relegation yeah. and we get rock bottom, that's all right. <laughs> It's happening. Yeah. We can win the backwards tax. Answer no. it. Answer no, the I've never been to South America. I don't know. Um, you guys made my day mentioning Township Rollers, rollers uh, my hometown club and most successful team in Botswana. He's oh, from yeah. Botswana, so no, he may be. Yeah, that's fantastic. My old man was even chairman in the 90s. Ooh. The strange name, uh, they were named by uh, Gaborón, was a new settlement, Hench Township, and Rollers ref- refers to lawn rollers that you used to flas- flatten uh, the grass. Okay. Or a pensioner. Or a pensioner <laughs> with covered in tar. So what's the explanation for miscellaneous, then? Other team names in Botswana. Botswana, usually from the smaller towns, are Moshupa Lovers. Nice. Which I think is nice. Uh, Mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously very popular, buzzing around everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Naughty Boys. Naughty Boys. Naughty, Naughty Boys. boys. Yeah. Manager Danny Dyer. I want to move. <laughs> <laughs> no. Bl- Black Peril, which kind of sounds like you, like a Scotsman trying to describe your saviour. Yeah, or a pirate. <laughs> like a pirate ship. <laughs> uh, killer, killer Giants. That's oh, nice. That's killer nice. Giants. Yeah, yeah, everyone on the team's called David. Green Lovers. <laughs> Green lovers. Green lovers. Green lovers. Isn't that nice? Wow. Uh, Space Moon Landers. Yeah, that's pretty that awesome. is, That's from back in the day. Not now, sure if they even still play. Now says. you're talking. Yeah. Space, the thing is, with this type of email, it's very, very difficult to know how many of them are real. Well, he, he does say that Black Pedal. Per- Black Pedal uh, was from back in the day, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we nice, go. Nice Let's game. assume they're all real because it's brilliant. Yeah, right. Okay, fair enough. Well, it's uh, it's coming to the end of the year. Of course, 2016 has been rather interesting, but aren't mm. all the years interesting in their own way? This one's been a you just got an answer to look for. You just got an answer to look for. Of course you do. <laughs> well, that that's going to be quite a handy um, observational tactic look because I'm going to ask you boys who's been your standout person in football in 2016. Man of the year. Let's call it the man of the year. <laughs> man of the year. Now remember, this is like... all right. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>... <laughs> I, I'm presuming I'm not allowed to go for Rafa Benitez. You, it's Christmas. You can we do love you, RB. Right. You can do what you want. Well, no, but there could be an argument listen, there with Rafa Benitez. Listen, he's taken them down. <laughs> <laughs> he's now at the year Real Madrid. Yeah, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the championship. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Started off with the biggest club in the world. Got a team relegated to the championship. Dawson, that ticks on my boxes. Yeah. I just it's the romance of relegation. Yeah. My parachute well, love. I hear what you say. I hear him. what you say about Ronaldo and Ranieri, but <laughs> Benitez has just won eight games in a row in the championship. All right, all right. Everyone shut their mouths. Mark Clattenburg. <laughs> Didn't happen. I was just going to squeeze a quick highlight in. George Gaskin, the Littlehampton and Horsham striker, um, scored uh, over the Christmas period. He plays um, in... Uh, oh, I saw this. Yeah, I'm trying to think which, which league. He, he, one is in the Ryman League South Division, which is which is not a bad standard. Yeah. And it's better than Leatherhead Reserves, I can tell you yeah, that. Yeah, right. Uh, well, it's not a reserve league for a start. Um, and uh, I think he, he plays in the, um, the SC... 
FL Premier Division. And this was in the uh, the Little Hampton Gazette. He scored two hat tricks in, in one, one day for two <laughs> different teams. And that's yeah. that's a decent standard. That uh, you know, Ryman League South Division. It's, it's you know, a respectable level. It's not like he scored. You know, he scored for the school and then his no. club team or something. That's know. fantastic. I mean, uh, you know. Just to play twice in one day. <laughs> he's 26, he's not like 14. Speaking as a severely overweight 36-year-old man, just to play two games of football in one day. I'm, to, be, to be honest, if you'd have put that in there, I'd have been impressed. <laughs> what, did he come up? No, he played the whole game. Oh, was it five or side? Yeah, that's still good. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that is good, yeah. It's, it's the same sort of engine you need to have when you're a kid over the yeah. park and games go up to like yeah. 45 all. I know, right. And then it only stops because the sun goes down. What, did he drive himself home as well? <laughs> <laughs> he ran home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get this man signed up. Yes, George, he's twenty six. George Gaskin. Hopefully, we haven't. Um, hopefully, we haven't sort of outed him as some sort of ringer, and he's going to be suspended. Well, then he should know better. He should, yeah. In which case, if, if he is, that would be quite funny. Don't endorse it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He could be like the next Joe the Goal. What's, what's your name, George Gaskin? Yeah, is that your real name? <laughs> <laughs> when you used to go filling for your mates' teams, and you couldn't get signed on quick enough. <laughs> I remember playing for the. Uh, do we have to? I remember playing for the university, and one of our lads, he was. It was a friend's university. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I realised what I was done there. And one of the lads wasn't eligible to play. Yeah. Right? You know who I'm talking about. Old, right. yeah. and, uh, um, and he got booked. And he thought to himself, oh, I can't give my name. So he looked up, and the first person he saw, he gave their name. They were also ineligible to play. <laughs> Very that nice. A disgrace. Very nice. Oh dear, I was eligible though. Yeah, I mean, all, my mate was although eligible, not, although yeah. not selected. Yeah, <laughs> not, just in, in the reserves. Yeah, right. Before, uh, before we go to a little ad break, uh, Brentford versus Eastleigh. Mm. Yes, this, this is, is this is a nice one. It is a nice one because um, Martin Allen is manager of Eastleigh, po- yeah. possibly old mad dog. Oh yeah, one of, one of the most bizarre <laughs> managerial careers yeah. you could find in England, I think. I mean, and he, fashion and, uh, yeah. statements he's made. And he over used the to years. manage. Um, he used to manage Brentford, of course. Yeah, he he, uh, he took him to two playoff semi finals. He's managed everywhere, isn't he? Yeah, that is definitely a man who doesn't call himself mad. When, the, the, the term mad dog has come from somewhere else. I'll he, take dog. He he, he, <laughs> he was he was a, a I mean. Yeah. I've probably talked about it on the show before. A very robust, shall mm-hmm. we say, midfield player. Yes. Um, played for Portsmouth, actually, for a little bit towards the end mm-hmm. of his career. And he, was very po- he was very popular down at Portsmouth. But he's he's also knocked out... <laughs> did he knock out Sunderland when they were in the I Premier thought, League? I thought you were going to say an individual player. Oh, he probably did. Yeah. He, oh, he's definitely done that. <laughs> but the reason I say this is I, I think he knocked out Sunderland when he was manager of Brentford. And he may have even knocked out... I oh, know, I think they drew against Southampton away when he was at Brentford in the okay. FA Cup. He got a bit of a reputation of, 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 yeah, yeah, of, yeah. of having these weird ideas to knock out teams. Mm-hmm. Right. And he... And, when they went down to Southampton, they end up. I think they drew two all, and he um, was in the local <laughs> press down there at the time because he was he was running. He was for, as motivation. Oh, he was running. Run, like, he was, no, he was running. No, that's, that was a different. That oh, was right. a different one. That was him as well. But that's oh, not okay, his, right. He was running naked into the Solent, getting all his players. Come on, let's go over a swim in the Solent. It's freezing. Which is yeah. the on the on the coast? It's the south coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, well, he wasn't naked. I think he was. He, he was either naked at the river or naked in the sea. One of those. Was naked, wasn't right. the, but the river. The river one was. I think he just taken over. I can't remember which. Side, and they'd gone on. For, they'd gone on like a bit of a run, and there was a river there. And he thought to himself, "Right, I'll g him up." You know, like 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 you get some sort of that was summer up north while he was on a away game with Brentford. It was with Brentford as well. Oh, was that with? Yeah, Brentford, he's done most it? of most of his finest work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, side. Did he not dive into the river and like he, he climbed up the other side of the bank or so something? Come on, you not. Sense. Yeah, he was like trying to g him up, it, it and he was, thought, it, "I'll lead from the front." He should manage in Paulo, shouldn't he? What, really? what, you're referring, <laughs> what you're referring to is, yeah. is, I think I'm right in saying there was two players on the river bank having an argument. And they were talking about going for a swim in the river naked. Right. And from nowhere, Mark Allen came, came and I dived in and swam it. And got out the other side and went, don't fucking say you're going to do so, I can not do it. <laughs> <laughs> do you think they've bought into their own fairy tale myth a little bit to the point where they're going, oh, there's no way we can win the Premier League again. And they're just sort of almost just allowing it to happen. It was sort of forgetting that they actually, you know, they do still have some control over their own destiny. They it's, don't have to have an absolutely terrible season. Uh, Luke sort of alluded to it, I think. It's a tribute season, isn't it? Ranieri's picking up his uh, honorary degree from De Montfort University. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, where Pete a... went? Yeah. And yeah. Did, did you get a degree from there? I did no graduate. No, okay. Because I had outstanding library, library finds. finds so, yeah. 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 I knew there was something funny about yeah. that. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you get... <laughs> he's, he's, 
Hopefully he'll get an honorary one at some point. Could <laughs> you just pay them now and, and get your degree, or is it? I is think it I did point? a radio show where I rang them up and they rang me back and they said that if I gave thirty quid to <laughs> children in need, they would say no more about it. So I think <laughs> technically I can graduate if I fancy it. But you've decided to snub children in need. <laughs> no, I gave the children in need money. I just need to organise a time where I can throw a mortar ball I, in the air. I, I, I gave children in money. Or any I, kind of mortar. I just can't prove it. Yeah. <laughs> well, they sort of bribed you with a charity. Payment. I was like, it's yeah. a very strange. Yeah. I don't know if that's morally. It's only self assessment, so it's tax deductible. So up yours. Higher edu- Pete higher, always wins. Higher education isn't what it was, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't when I was there, no. You turned off on the first day, just give 30 quid to children in need. <laughs> that's fine. I, I did my third year in a zoo, Luke. So. <laughs> so. I, I go. <laughs> oh. uh, well, let's move on to another tie. Oxford United at home to Newcastle United. How about that, eh? Upset! Upset! Is it? 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 Um, uh, Oxford manager Michael Appleton, he's an ambitious man. He said that he's glad the match won't be on TV because, according to him, we don't turn up when the cameras are on. That, <laughs> and Newcastle do. Don't so. tell about the highlights. I love this whole new <laughs> era. I'd love it if managers were this honest. David Moyes, Michael Appleton, yeah. more should do it. Mm. Uh, he's ex, he's ex Pompey, isn't he? Yeah, well, he managed Portsmouth. Yeah. To be fair to Michael Appleton, he managed Portsmouth. I think it might have been his first job in management, and, and Portsmouth were in the depths of the problems they were in. It was very difficult for him. Mm-hmm. I don't think many. I don't think many people thought he got a fair chance there. But speaking of the, of the upset thing, um, I did a bit of research about Oxford versus Newcastle. Uh, in 1992, um, the last time the two, t- two teams played mm. was in 93. In 1992, Oxford beat Newcastle 4 2 and 5 2. Dished oh. out a couple of batteries. Yeah, nice. We'll have. <laughs> does that make you worried for this time? <laughs> Not yeah, particularly, no. <laughs> and I particularly feel for, um, for, for Bradford City fans because um, Oxford was supposed to play in the EFL trophy midweek. Mm against Bradford. Mm. Bit of a long trip going to Oxford. Game was called off for a frozen pitch 20 minutes before kick Yeah, oh. that is annoying. <laughs> it's like the officials are going, well, kick us at 7.45. It's probably going to get warmer. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, it's getting warmer, so we'll give it as, as long yeah, as we yeah, can. Yeah. That's right. 20 minutes... Oh, 99% of those Bradford City fans would have been in the ground. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Unbelievable. Yeah. They've got to get reimbursed for that. They, they really do. And that's um, Newcastle's best hope, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. um, Michael Abbott uh, did go on to say, though, he said, uh, but there's no doubt about it, if we can cause an upset, we'll be a pretty big deal in the media the next day. Oh, well, big wh- time. When do you want the coverage or not? Yeah, no, <laughs> don't yeah. give us the coverage, but if we win, then give us the give coverage. Give us it, yeah. If we're 3-0 up with 10 minutes left, get your cameras down here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the cameras, will, the, cameras will, the cameras will already be there for the highlight package, so... Yeah. I don't understand. How does he know what... Is that a red light? Is that a red light on? <laughs> is that a live transmission? Yeah. You are taking a piss if this is going Is that a mixing desk you got? Is that a live, is that a live broadcast unit? Yeah, exactly. Get out. Yeah, yeah. Michael Abton running up and down the touchline. There's no film in that camera. Do not worry. <laughs> He's Facebook live in over there. Take the lead. <laughs> Players on the pitch going, boss, are there, are there people? Look, are there people watching? <laughs> yeah. There are people in the ground. They can see. I can't There's do it ma- if you watch me. I can't do it if you watch me. PSG playing Celtic. <laughs> it would be it, hundreds. It, it would literally be 11 0. Um, are you going to talk about Mark McGee? I was going to mention Mark McGee. Excellent. May I? Yes. <laughs> I saw a brilliant. I mean, obviously, Mark McGee, for those who haven't seen, was sent to the stands uh, the other day against Aberdeen. Um, I, think he, it was last, I think it was last week. His team were beaten 7 2 by Aberdeen when <clears throat> he was sent to the stands. Um, I saw a brilliant article uh, today. About Mark McGee apparently in quite wanting an explanation about not only why he was sent to the stands against Aberdeen, um, but why so many refereeing decisions went against his team in that game and they lost 7 2. Now, I didn't see the game in its entirety, and I'm mm-hmm. the first to admit that, but I've seen a decent amount of football matches in my time, and if you concede seven <laughs> goals in one game, it's rarely the fault of the referee. <laughs> and it was, it was fantastic because I don't know if you guys know, but James McFadden is the assistant to McGee at Motherwell. Yeah, Obviously, ex Scottish yeah, striker, yeah. Um, plays for Everton and, and one or two others. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he was. He was um, I, just thought, I just thought that was worth mentioning but speaking after the game Mark McGee according to the BBC said he was absolutely disgusted and horrified by the attitude of the fourth official <laughs> and wanted clarity and after we would be speaking to the SFA, SFA's head of referees John Fleming McGee said John Fleming I'll be speaking to a lawyer I can only think there's an agenda <laughs> now if you want <laughs> If you watch the footage, Mark McGee is absolutely fuming. He's one of the angriest men in Britain. Yeah, it's like he tried to make out that he was really calm and, mm. and honest. And the great quote afterwards was he said, uh, in the, in the, he said, <laughs> he said, I'm not being funny, but the fourth official sport the game for me. <laughs> You're not your defending. Give me a bit more perspective. If you haven't got time to go and watch the video, ever, I'll give you. I'll just, I'll just leave with this: a police officer had to take him to the stand. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> he's one of those men who's so angry mm. that anybody with a sort of a rational mind wouldn't want to talk to him. He, he also he also spotted a fan. When he, when the police yeah. were, uh, the police were escorted into the seat of the stands, he spotted a fan uh, filming him and, and screamed at him, Is that thing on? Get your fuck! <laughs> That's such a wonderful Scottishism. Oh, God. Anyway, Beg, Begbie in action. Mark McGee is the, is the gift that keeps on giving in that situation. <laughs> it's fantastic to watch. Really, yeah. I, I, I just said to you, if you haven't got time to go and sit, fair enough, but please do mm. treat yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, dearie me. Um, Mark Warburton. He's got the, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll agree, he's got the weapon of surprise on his side. Yeah. Right? Well, I have a highlight as well, and it's 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 in the same vein as what's been going on. There's been a few good ones. The Argentina under-20 coach, Gerardo um, Solorio, who's... Um, <laughs> he's been suspended. And I'll tell you why. He was trying to climb a perimeter fencing to fight fans. <laughs> At 50, 57 years old. Under-20 coach. <laughs> <laughs> In it, anyone caring that much? Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. He's under. Is he the new under twenty one boss, Eddie Boothroyd? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I think he's certainly naming the hat, but I'm yeah. not. I think I think he may have uh, got the job. Can you imagine some I mean, Boothroyd's definitely managed at that level. Imagine me, Big Eddie going right. I'm not having that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, coming to get you. The, the Mark McGee gets. He's sent, definitely involved in the setup at England. Boothroyd, yeah. yeah. Mark McGee gets sent to the stands, right? Yeah, and rightly so. And rightly right. so. And a fan is filming him, and McGee turns round, and you could imagine, because he's an angry man anyway, I mean, in the heat of the moment, he's going, Oi, are you going to turn that effing thing off, or whatever yeah. he says, right? That's, that's like, quite outrageous for here. The Argentina national team, under-21 coach, is trying to climb a perimeter fence to fight fans. I thought you said it was under-20, so it's not as bad. Under-20, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that fence there to keep the coaches out? I don't know. Yeah. But the quote, Jim, I have to say this, people call me old, a drunk, but I just climbed the fence to look for the haters. <laughs> It goes on. It's like Flo Rider. <laughs> Sometimes. He's, like, he's Drake. I get a good feeling. Yeah. Um, I've said a thousand sorries, but I'm feeling like Jesus, to be honest. Everyone, <laughs> at, everyone at me for no reason. <laughs> Again, like, how is there even this much criticism of the under-20 coach? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that much. Imagine his, his boss. life hell. Imagine his boss, right, you're going to go out there, you're going to say something to the press about this. Sorry, I was just trying to get off the haters. Not that. Don't say that. All right, well, I'm feeling like Jesus for crying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. Jesus, who famously climbed many fences <laughs> yeah. to get at the haters. Blessed are the peacemakers. Yeah. If you disagree with that, I'll punch your noses. Yeah. <laughs> just... oh, What's his name, this guy? It's uh, Gerardo Solorio. Just making a note. Yeah. Mm. He might <laughs> pop up again. Well, he's not going to be in a job, surely. Oh, mind you, you never know with the Argentine in FA. Yeah, yeah. He might be given a three-year extension. We love your passion. Yeah. Mm. Oh. You can manage the national team. Yeah. <laughs> right, that's it. You should be inspired I'm by embarrassed that. by that. <laughs> so, Vicious Mate's dad, fantastic stuff. And, and finally for now, Tobias Lilia Blood. Uh, I have a problem with the podcast and I need your help, guys. Sometimes during the commercial break, there is a fellow saying something like, Hi, Linford Grimes here, and you're listening <laughs> to the Football Ramble. <laughs> <laughs> I have Googled this name, and even though I'm not a native English speaker, I don't think that a village in the Brecon district of Norfolk is able to produce such a sentence, even in your wacky podcast. I also don't think that Linford Christie has received a speech impediment that has stopped pronouncing his name uh, correctly. I have been looking into this for some time, and I can't find the person who he <laughs> is. Are you so telling p- me we've got a listener who's never heard of Linford Grimes? <laughs> he's a legend. Oh, he's a legend. Yeah. Yeah. Look Linford hard Grimes. on the internet. Yeah. You must be spelling it wrong. Yeah. I'm not going to help you. So <laughs> please let me know. I would very much like to fall asleep again as this is consuming all my free time. Thank you, Tobias Lilia Blood. Let's leave that there. Let's see out there. I'm not putting that man out. <laughs> Linford Grimes. Yeah. I love that guy. <laughs> Great player. Pop- he, like, popular he with the fans. Real servant. Fan, <laughs> fan, fan favourite. Was it the 1954 effort? Yeah. 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 Get an education. I'm Grimesy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're going to talk more about football and that after this. Hi, I'm Linvoy Primus, and you're listening to the Football Ramble. Hi, I'm Linvoy Primus, and you're listening to the Football Ramble. Watford will have a, a new manager probably quite soon, and and oh, another manager probably up, quite they? soon after that. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be queuing up. The, the commentator, commentators are meant to be impartial, obviously, but they are meant to. Um, uh, be d- 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 descriptive of what's going on. What w- Watford were absolutely woeful, is yeah. what the commentator <laughs> said after the game. I've never they were though. Yeah. But uh, that scathing. Have you ever heard a commentator that scathing? Uh, Mick McCarthy w- in a World quite Cup. A... Well, okay. Tr- yeah, yeah, just... Do you remember it was a? Game, I, I, he even said something like, "I know we're supposed to big these games up, but this has been awful." <laughs> 
It's <laughs> amazing. That was the same game yeah. where he started. It was a game he was managing. <laughs> <laughs> he started off that game, and it was a game. It was something like Ireland against Liechtenstein or something. And he said at the start of that game, just, just to let everyone know, I can't pronounce a left back's name, so I'm just going to call him left back. <laughs> <laughs> in the first minute, in the first minute of the game, just right down phonetically. Yeah. You seen the packs mm. they get given? Yeah. With the yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, thanks. Foreign mark, not having it. <laughs> <laughs> I love a bit of that. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk more. Oh, dear. So then, gentlemen, if you could present an award to anybody from the world of football, what would it be for and who would it be to, Jim? I would like to see, um, once and for all, the most terrifying club mascot recognised. Because th- <laughs> there are so many, like, horrific felt nightmares out there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, the Partick one? The Partick Thistle one. That's it, the it was best obviously one. a strong contender, yeah. the, the David Shrigley one. But there are a, a lot, lot more out the there. It's like, it looks like a little weird, angry star man to- Designed yeah. by a uh, notable UK artist, David Shrigley. Right. It's a plastic thistle, yeah. and it's it's um, it's terrifying. It's enjoyable. Quite it's so. almost it's almost as terrifying as Mark McGee. <laughs> but, not, but not quite more yeah. on him later by I the was way. about to say Mark McGee fans keep, uh, <laughs> keep still both of you keep, uh, keep, keep your attention mm. so uh, Scunthorpe I've got one called the Scunny Bunny which is this sort Ooh. of terrifying oh. Donnie Darko Such style like rabbit vibrator I don't, I, I don't want to hear I don't want to hear more about that oh Pete's back ladies <laughs> and gentlemen like someone on the market I got you Scunny Bunnies two for a tenner yeah, well, club three handkerchiefs 50 pence club merchandise is getting stranger all the time yeah, so maybe yeah. there's a gap in the market there um, <laughs> Don't I'm, call him that, mate. It's <laughs> <laughs> part of a lady. Oh, Peter. Peter Donaldson. Minutes. It's taken minutes. You're not on it? your sex holiday now. <laughs> <laughs> to Beijing. Although, well, judging by the ass, man, you couldn't get up to anything. <laughs> you can be weird anywhere, Pete. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you're out of our sight, Jim, it's That's what dubious. I said on the visa. <laughs> Jim, with his asthma, he couldn't get up to anything. <laughs> yeah, I heard it and I chose to ignore it. The biggest cod- we, we know oh, it's not true. <laughs> the air quality's terrible there. The biggest contraceptive. <laughs> Pete's got is that shirt. <laughs> oh, stop, right, stop let's not bring the shirt to this. Shirt. Good God. <laughs> it's not an audio feature, for one thing. So, um, it's not a visual feature. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a visual assault. <laughs> God, you impress yeah, I'm, I'm really trying, mate. Um, so, uh, Peter, you'll be aware of the Newcastle mascots. Um, uh, they're Maggie and Monty Magpie, aren't they? Yeah. They're they, they, they they husband, they they husband, husband and wife. They're husband and wife, right? And obviously the top of them is a horrible felt mascot nightmare, but otherwise they just wear jeans. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Johnny James. <laughs> so much about the about the fine city, doesn't yeah. it? Like, oh my goodness me! I mean, they're, they're maybe not terrifying, but I felt they, they were worthy of a mention. There's, if um, you mention the city gent again on this I'm podcast, not. Right? I don't need to now. Because I, I trust get... Jim to do it. <laughs> it's not a terrifying one. He's a gent. Wait, Jim, if you don't mind me saying, <sighs> you've just described two <laughs> massive human-sized magpies wearing jeans and said they're not that terrifying. <laughs> they sound bloody terrifying to me. <laughs> and don't forget that they're married. <laughs> Good. That's a good thing. I know it's good. It's, it's just odd. It seems odd, though, doesn't it? It's a strange thing for the backstory. It's ironic, given your situation, you're a fan of a stable family unit. Yeah. <laughs> Oi, come on. Come on. Why is Luke having a good... What's he been doing since I've been away? Oh, right. yeah, he's, on. He's, he's not had this. He's right. not had the punching he's bag. He's had no sidekick. It's Jim. a floral punching bag. <laughs> What's your answer? So, uh, God, right. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm trying to show my work in. I really am. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Got in, yeah, yeah. sitting opposite. Yeah, yeah. Don't let it. Don't let him email again. <laughs> uh, hello again. Uh, this is from Jake Street. Uh, I'm back to yet more mascot talk. The last mascot I brought to your attention was Ron Corn of Run Corn FC, which yeah, I think yeah, we all yeah. enjoyed oh, very Ron Corn. Cool Ron Corn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this time I'm bringing you uh, Mosley FC's <laughs> Marv the LED Light. <laughs> <laughs> nice. what? You want to check him out? <laughs> He doesn't, oh, wow. he doesn't even look light. particular. He looks, just looks like a, a, like like a, a chimney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or like a big sort of you know, energy saving light bulb. He looks like a cigarette. Let's make yeah, it very it looks clear. Yeah, like a vape. Yeah. <laughs> Why on um, earth is he an it? LED light? Well, I'm about what's to explain. It, what's his name, Pete? Uh, Marv the LED light. <laughs> not it's not even a not even a right. right. I have no idea why they're known. I have no idea why, as they're known as the Lily Whites, and they're not sponsored by any lighting company. So I've no clue as to why they have an LED as their mascot. Wow. And he wants Locked us to LED say hello. lights are white. Football and he wants mystery. to say hello. So he wants to explain it, Jim, but he, he cut you off to say he's going to explain it, and he explained it, so no one knows why. Yeah, no one knows why. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. He let us say hello to his friend Mitchell Barron, who's a big Don't let him do listener. that. Yeah. I will let him do that, because he provided some 
jocks. Yeah. Right. It's right in LED this, light. This is, the, this is the author of Ron Corn, mate. Yeah, Fair enough. He's exactly. worthy of respect. How about this? Uh, but anyway, looking ahead to the weekend, uh, what have I got here? My eyes are terrible. I need to get this computer closer. Uh, it's Stuart Montague. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Borough lads getting all giddy now. Karanka's gone, playing some mad Keegan style football, uh, 2 3 5 uh, formation, and treating us to a 7 6 thriller. Yeah. Do you know what Sumptuous. I Do you know what well, I was yeah. Speaking of uh, Middlesbrough and managers, is it time Steve McLaren came back? Could, back, could be. Yeah. Could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, in, he's in the running, I think. Well, he's just left, uh, a, he's just left a club, so... Derby, yeah. yeah. Mm. Depressing, that, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> it is depressing, <laughs> it is. I mean, if yeah. you're a Millersborough fan, you just got rid of Karanka. <laughs> can I, can I... Sorry, can I just nip in while, before you do that? My, mine is Gary Rowett, of course, is going to be in charge of Derby now. Yeah. And, well, he is in charge of Derby, and he was saying that he wants McLaren's son to stay on as a part of the backroom staff. That's nice. I don't know if that's a dig or it's nice. That's depressing as well. <laughs> I'm trying to think about how you can make that more than present. I'll, I'll raise your son for you as well, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I will say your offspring, um, Steve. And presumably, Steve, you live locally, don't you? So I'll, 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 uh, um, speaking of that, by the way, Marcus. They, won, they, they beat, beat them at Bournemouth, didn't they? They did. They beat them three one. So, uh, Bournemouth will be um, looking for revenge, but it could be a feisty affair. Speaking of feisty affairs... There it is! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we mentioned red cards in the Merseyside derby. Five red cards, yeah, I think you said, in that game. No, there should have been five. There were three. Oh, there were three. Been five. Yeah, there should have been five. Well, Easter Road, this week... There were four. <laughs> only, two, only two of them were players. Yeah. It's absolutely, it, was, it was like the last days of Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, a mass <laughs> brawl uh, happened at the end of that one between Hibbs and Morton. It was, it was nil-nil. But the real story was the two managers going at yeah. it. We know Neil Lennon likes a ruck. There, yeah. there is an absolutely incredible, like, very Alan Partridge-style photo story of this on the Daily Records it. website. It's, it's just amazing. I only just, clicked on it because I thought it was a proper video. Uh, no, but it starts <laughs> off just like a normal football match, and then there it just there are... Punches flying, it's a just show, bundles. It's it yeah. just beautiful. Yeah. It really is. Jim Duffy and him had to be separated. Jesus, Jim Duffy looks hard. <laughs> he does. He <laughs> looks like a tough, tough His man. His head looks like a bullet. <laughs> He's, he is the dictionary definition of old man heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He makes Joe Jordan look like, look like Bambi. Definitely. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like his skull has a skull. And when, when, he, had, when he had that um, dust up with, with Lennon that you mentioned, Lennon does like a, like a dust up himself. He, he said. Uh, he said... There were no punches thrown. This is Jim Duffy. There were no mm. punches thrown. If I throw a punch, you'll know about it. Yeah. <laughs> he, also, he also said that he was sort of really embarrassed by it, but afterwards he said uh, maybe it was handbags with a few things inside the handbags. <laughs> <laughs> so sinister. No? Yeah. A couple of half bricks in that yeah. handbag. You could Snook all, a bottle in a sock. I tell you, I tell you something, no, the first thing I thought of when I saw Jim Duffy's face yeah. is that man could hold his own in any pub in the land. <laughs> any pub in the land. Even that one, even the, the, even that one in Aberdeen. When nobody yeah. goes to any time of the day or not, that yeah. one in Aberdeen was in that world, uh, Britain's hardest oh, part yeah, of the yeah. series. And uh, I actually showed my granddad a bit of that. He spent a lot of time in Aberdeen when he was younger. Mm. Uh, and uh, I asked him if he recognised it. He said no. But he said um, what, one thing about Aberdeen is it's not quite the end of the world, <laughs> but you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Jim Duffy! Because Neil Lennon accused Jim Duffy of challenging him to a fight. And I thought, I tell you what, Mr. Lennon, you know, whatever you, you didn't seem to wait. You know, for any yeah. clarification mm. on that, you know, yeah. you might have assumed he's that been he kicked in the head by Alan Shearer. He's not going to like second guess anyone again, yeah. is he? He's, he's certainly not. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll go. Pete, like, the you, phrase you... he used was "square go." Well, I, know, <laughs> yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah. Jim Dovey said he denied asking for a square go, which is which is <laughs> square wonderful. Square go. Give me. Uh, I just have to say, come ahead, square go. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, uh, Marcus? Remember our mate from uni, Richie, friends of yeah, yeah, he, he always yeah. used to say, uh, whenever you'd like muck around with him or someone was ready, he'd always go, "Go on then." I make it a good one. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you the first. Yeah, um, the, 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 Duffy was sent to the stands, of course, with, with Neil Lennon. And he said, "I've never been set." Duffy playing like the innocent party, I know. like like you were saying. Oh, I thought, uh, you know, this has never happened to me or anything like this. It's like a Scottish Voldemort. <laughs> There's no way you can play the innocent party. Anyway. He said, "I've never been sent to the stands before tonight. It's my first time, but it's always good to lose your virginity eventually." <laughs> This guy's gone under our radar for far too oh, long. Oh, man. He mm. said, I've never been in this situation before, and I don't know how it works. Maybe I should ask Lenny. Yeah. Just so disrespectful. Uh, apparently, they're good pals as well. Yeah. I thought they go back a long way, and they're good pals. In, in and that's how they behave. Life. Yeah, well, quite. God knows what they do with their enemies. Yeah. But- <laughs> <laughs> we might hear a bit more of Jim if Greenock get uh, promoted because they're doing all right, aren't they? They're Second league or something like that. Hibs are miles ahead, though. Aren't it was they? yeah, it was a big game. It was and a big only game. one go up automatically. So oh, we'll goodness. see. Wonderful stuff. Uh, we must go to a break. I bought my Notts County top for his fortieth. Oh, oh. Got it on eBay from like a house clearance. Dead man's shirt. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> love it. Ridiculous. And but the best Your thing about it, always is... take turns like that. I love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the best thing about it is the sponsor was Fascia Mania. 
Remember when fascias were big? What, for phones? Fascia, yeah, for mobile phones. Yeah. What, what even yeah, were okay. they? They were like plastic, uh, like additions to your, oh, yeah, right. to your actual mobile phone. Cover, basically. Yeah. yeah. Fascia mania. I used to have a Portsmouth cover on my phone, on my, th- uh, my 3210. 3210. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Classic, mate. Yeah. Classic. It was a classic. I was remembering my first mobile phone, and I remember that the SIM card was a credit card-sized SIM card. Yeah, I remember that. Fantastic. Oh, Pete, you probably, knowing what we know about you and technology, you probably had a mobile phone in about 1984. <laughs> <laughs> One of those in big brick briefcase. ones. Yeah, yeah. Briefcase. You had to bring, like, an aerial around with it. <laughs> yeah. No, I got into a fight with the jeweller's son because I said he was... The jeweller's son. Again, the, ju- the there, town there jeweller. I got, in a fight. Coming? I got into a fight what with... What a the northern t- jeweller. <laughs> I got into the, to to a fight. the butcher's son. <laughs> I got into a fight with a, a jeweller's son, son, the jeweller's son, because uh, because I said he was slimy because he had a mobile phone when we were like fifteen yeah, or something. Wow. Nobody else had Did one. Did you grow up in a nursery rhyme? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is this when you worked down the Hovis mine? Oh, well, my lovelies. Um, did you see, of course you did, because we talked about it on one of the previous football rambles, that inflatables were banned at Barnet when Grimsby Town came to town. Mm. Mm. Um they brought along a, a mariachi band, as of course we talked about um, before. What would you bring along instead of inflatables if you were given the choice? If you were in the Grimsby end for that game, Jim? Uh, well, there's worse things to have come out of a pinata than a nice bit of fish for your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say, keep with the Mexican tradition, you're going to have a big fence in front of the wall. Big wall, yeah. 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 Build a wall. Build a wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Luke, uh, Peter, I, we just had Luke. Sorry, Peter. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'd take in the actual things that the inflatables are meant to represent. You know, like the popular inflatable items you get, like a palm tree. Mm. Yeah. I'd take a palm mm. tree big in. Banana. Big banana. Or a big actual <laughs> banana. A, yeah. dead, a, dead, a dead flamingo. Or a big a dead shark. Yeah. Yeah. A red Stratocaster. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking. A big meaty pink willy. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine bring, that. Just bring your own. Yeah, mate. He, always, he, always <laughs> tra- he always travels around with them. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll like make one out of like um, loads and loads of compacted chicken breasts. Into one of those big, you know, you see them on Hindus. That's, 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 that's disgusting. disgusting. <laughs> that's that, disgusting. Might be the, that might be the worst thing that's ever been said on this show. Also, that is big, also chicken, chicken breasts are expensive. Use thighs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry for the live show, innit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why does the whole thing stink? Come to the live show, people will be dishing out raw chicken thighs. <laughs> Shaped no. into a penis. Yeah. <laughs> get, get a slice. There we go. Fashion <laughs> your thighs into a penis. <laughs> But there was unsavoury scenes in, in another big derby on the continent on the weekend. In the Denmark, uh, sorry, the Copenhagen derby rather, happened on the weekend. Bronby and FC Copenhagen. Some Bronby supporters threw dead rats at an opposition player when he went to take a corner. Where, have they, where have they got those from? Have they killed them there? Or I, them I reckon they're them in storage. Like, f- like, put it in the freezer. Do you think? And thaw think them out it, for the day. Yeah, they did look defrosted, to be fair. <laughs> if anyone in this room knows anything about a rat storage, <laughs> my, my money's on Donny again. <laughs> there is l- an optimal uh, how damp the air is, so okay. it's just important. That's your biggest problem with dead rats <laughs> yeah. and their storage. I like you, pens you, and dead rats, i tell you what. How many, how many would you be keeping in one sort of storage container? I would use, I would put them all in a cardboard box. I'd put about five per cardboard box on top of a dehumidifier, so... <laughs> Do you, do, you stack, do you stack the rats? Stack the rats. No, 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 no. They wouldn't be touching. No. Because no. you, might, you might use them for different reasons. <laughs> they might use them for different reasons. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you, like, like chucking them at a, a rival yeah, player in a like, derby game. I guess yeah. you wouldn't want to contaminate them. And, yeah. and, and here's where us as a show can really stand out with this sort of stuff. So yep. we'll talk about this. No doubt that newspaper, whoever it is, we don't mention them because most of the newspapers we don't like. Yep. Uh, they, <laughs> <laughs> they, they, we'll use their stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. Like um, they, they've reported that. Probably, I would say. I haven't read the story, yeah. but I imagine they've re- reported that as a mm. negative thing. Yeah. That's how we can differentiate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I bloody love that. <laughs> and I endorse it. Well, that, that, <laughs> that is quite neat, leads us neatly onto what the Bronby uh, sporting director said. He said it's unfortunate that there are some visitors who could not figure out how to behave properly. Yeah. Is this behaving properly? We haven't figured it out <laughs> yet, you mug. Oh, it's such a Rubik's Cube of <laughs> social behaviour. Oh, oh, I'll suck it and see. Try yeah. now. <laughs> um, Do you prefer mice? And I, lo- I love the fact that we talk on this show before about um, fans in this country particularly writing banners and embarrass themselves. Mm. Like, like the kid coming down in the, in the morning on the kitchen table mm. the dad's writing a banner out. Yeah. Mm. Imagine the dead rats. <laughs> yeah. What are, you what, doing, what are you doing? <laughs> can you can you put this rat in your pocket? I've run out of space. Yeah. What is happening? I was like, to find one rat. Well, well, maybe couple, he's still stuck there. There's a couple of things to say here. Luke once said to me that he or, or us that he'd like to play football against the hundred pigs. Yeah. yeah. Don't know what he means by that. Although in, well, in another sense I do. And then secondly, I am possibly, and I'm I'm going to assume this and. It's to my detriment, that, or, or credit, whatever, that I'm assuming this is, that I think I'm the only person here that has been involved in the blowing up of dynamite. 
Really? Yeah. What, in the real world? In the real world, yes. Well, I, I, I don't know this for sure, but I almost... I'll put my mortgage on the fact that Pete's done it. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus, is this when you went to Vietnam and paid a man to let you throw a stick of dynamite at a cow? None of that's true. Mm. And it wasn't in Vietnam. Well, give us the dynamite. Don't, don't just tease it. Just give it, give it to well, us. Well, that email's from Andrew Lavers, by the way. Oh, that, thank you, Andrew. Do you want me to interpret that, that Andrew? I can interpret that. <laughs> <for> you, <laughs> yeah. um, you are almost certainly in love with your own mother. <laughs> yeah. All drinks mean that. Yeah. Mm. Um... Yeah, there back to your dynamite chat. Uh, it was, uh, and it is dynamite chat. It was uh, <laughs> 2005. It was Bolivia. Okay, it was in South America, right? And uh, there's a, there's a, there's a um, a mining town, or a, no, no, it's still a mining town called Potosi. I think it's it's called in Bolivia. There was a lot of silver mining there, and they do a mining a, a tour of the mines. I was actually ill. I didn't get to go to see the mines, but m- my mate who I was with did, and two other uh, Canadian chaps who we were travelling with, and they sell two things this mine. Dynamite and extremely strong alcohol. Right. <laughs> yeah. Good combo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What could go wrong? Yeah. One of those things is bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, both are very good. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, and, and uh, a couple of uh, uh, chaps we acquired on the way um, got some dynamite and we, and we let it off. Uh, in a very safe environment, controlled. We've got a local to do it. it takes another side to you here, Mark, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know. What did you blow up with it? Uh, nothing. You just blew up nothing with it. No, we blew up a, a, a massive big, uh, like it was a big boulder thing. And it was... <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what yeah. the hell? Well, you asked me the this question. This is what you do when you go on your trip. You, you, say, you know, blow things up. You know when someone scores, like, you know when someone scores like, in the lower league, scores like an amazing goal, and someone says, oh, I've messy did that, we've been raving about it for months. Yeah. If Pete said that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, well, you know. Wow. Explosive, explosive oh, times. And you presumably weren't even drinking the really strong alcohol. This I was your own destructive. This guy, that was only a dream. It wasn't even yeah. real. You've topped it. <laughs> with one of your weird travels. I'm just saying that I was. Bit, I, I look. I never lit the thing. Do you know what I, was I never bought. I, in the court of law, I would have just been an innocent bystander. When you said it, do you want to know what I was thinking? Oh, I'd maybe get done for a fray. Do you want to know what I was hoping? I was hoping you'd do the old crocodile and deer, let it off in a lake and get all the fish. <laughs> That's what I was hoping. No, I'm not going to kill. You know. Oh, suddenly you're a moral, yeah. moral now. Are you very well, a, moral, boulder, a boulder's not going to... You're the last bastion of moral integrity right. now, are you? In this room. You're running well, around well, Bolivia you... in your pants. That might <laughs> just be in my mind. Yep. In your pants. That's a dream. With a stick of dynamite holding it above your head. It's actually not a stick. It's slightly more complex than that. Oh, sorry, oh, is it? I'm not an expert. No. Yeah. Clearly well, not. Someone is. There we go. <laughs> well, we had an expert with us. <laughs> he couldn't believe us like our Bolivian tour guide. We, we approached him, we said... Oh, no, no one ever wants to do this. By the way, Juan, um, his name was Juan, um, we said, oh, we got... And we thought, how are we going to... Because we, we, ne- we can't just go, oh, by the way, we're going to nip off and uh, if you hear a big explosion, don't worry about it. And we said, we've got some, <laughs> we got some, we got some dynamite, what do you reckon? And he, he couldn't believe his luck. His yeah. eyes lit up. Oh, I haven't, I haven't blown up anything for years, he said. He was <laughs> Give right, it yeah, he's... <laughs> Come here, you amateurs. Right. Well, back to some explosive action, if you will, uh, in the Champions dot com if you want to get involved you want a tip and if you want a tip and if you've got any stories about Kevin Hitchcock what's the biggest tip you've given Pete uh, you're quite a generous chap yeah, you're the you most are. generous one of all when of us I first, you're the, the biggest tip you've ever given you won't remember when I, I was imagine, first so. in when I was yeah. first in London I gave uh, I was writing a lot of checks that my ass definitely could not cash <laughs> uh, because I was very poor and it took like three or four days to cash and uh, I gave uh, I think fifteen pounds to a toilet attendant in a check. Yeah, that is the most Alan Price I've ever heard. That a man who had the <laughs> thickest Nigerian accent I've ever heard in my life. That his banking might have been done in Lagos. See, so that's why I thought he'd take some time to cash the check. He didn't. He cashed it almost immediately, <laughs> and I couldn't eat for a week. So well done, me. <laughs> The hell? Dude, if I may, if I may, please just take some time to think about Pete <laughs> writing out a check in a pub toilet for fifteen pounds to a toilet. That's all I'm thinking yeah. about. Yeah. Just, just you can have a tenner for a couple of days. Fifteen quid if it's a check. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cash it yet. Yeah. No. Oh, you have. I do miss the checkbooks. Yeah. They were very. So why, they been... sound yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah so. He actually cashed it straight away. He cashed it straight Classic. away. I was Classic. Stuff. Skint that week. Absolutely. St- Brassic. Yeah. Terrible business. <laughs> uh, so, um, speaking of uh, strange things, Tony Adams, let's go to the Liga, um, started his temporary head coach it's just role. weird sentence, isn't it? Granada. Let's go to La Liga, Tony Adams. What the mm. flip's going on? Yeah. I, did you see his training session? Oh, I did. I thought oh, it was excellent. The macaroni Beautiful. Video. I thought it was excellent. Mm. <laughs> I just really enjoyed it. I, you know, I, I think there's a lot to be said um, for <clears> managers going over to, to Spain and, and trying their luck. I know he's got a job through nepotism and he's pals with the chairman, blah, blah, blah. 
Uh, but he's doing it. He doesn't yeah. have to do it. Uh-huh. He's doing it. They only uh, lost 3-0. And the best thing about it is, right, <laughs> is that all the fans of English football will say, oh, well, the problem is our coaches, our managers don't go overseas, do they? They don't go overseas and learn. Big they time. go overseas, rip the piss out of them. <laughs> <laughs> rip the piss out of them, mercy as much as you can until they come back a failure. <laughs> Yeah, Steve McLaren. Yeah, yeah. he Neville. won a league title. Yeah, he won two. Ne- yeah, it gets the absolute Mickey taken out of him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, he did try and sound like a Dutchman. And that's fine. Mm. And and that is a literal sentence but again, that, but, not but, some but, sort but of. Yeah, but in any other walk of life, that wouldn't be the takeaway. From yeah, of that. course. Yeah. Like Jim says, won two league titles. Yeah. You know, that's that is the takeaway. <laughs> yeah, with a really unfancied side as yeah. well. <laughs> Just oh, ah, you oh, mug yeah. McLaren. Yeah. And now you're back here. And now you're crap. <laughs> It's like, he, he could have done... Ah, you dickhead, you tried! <laughs> you were trying! Look, you're trying to better yourself. Why don't more of you try this one? Hey, you're like pathetic. <laughs> and, oh, well, how's Adam's getting on? Dunno, look at this funny dance he's done. Yeah. It was a funny dance. It was brilliant. It, it was wasn't for Edge, I don't fair. know what he was trying to say. Hey, what? Tony Adams. <laughs> what about his beige tracksuit trousers and blue polo shirt? Oh, you're getting in on it now. Yeah. I'm just saying, what about That's a combination you? of the two things. It's, look, taking the piss out of Pete's clothes yeah. and that exact attitude. It's called fashion, look it up. <laughs> Coincidence, that is what Pete's wearing. Come back, come back and wear a suit in the National League, you mug. Um, dear, oh dear. It is a funny one, Dan. So that, that's the end of our Spanish round, yeah. though. Yeah. Is, yeah. Oh, dearie me. But ahead of the classic. Okay, um, I appreciated the um, the quote from Snow, though, by the way. That's all right. It's all right. Um, Peter. Uh, was that a quote? I suppose it's more of a lyric, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carry on. Um, uh, but actually, a couple of years ago, I put a curse on someone. Uh huh. Oh, God. Uh, Is he still when in? When Eusebio died, I put a curse on Bella Gutman and I said, Bella Gutman, <laughs> you will never win another European title. And true to form, the very much deceased skeleton of Bella Gutman has not won another European title since that date. So yeah, You're the only mm. one in this room with experience of the question. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which uh, yeah. puts a lot of pressure on yours, because presumably <laughs> it's now going to happen. Well, yeah. he could like, kind of win posthumously. Okay, okay, which, is, that, is that your answer, the one so you've that, already done? Uh, Jim, I think we should push up on this. If, you, right, okay. if Pete's got experience of curse, is and they were. As he I think you should suggest an entirely realistic one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do whatever sort of shamanic ritual you have to do to make it happen, and then we'll see if it works. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Does anybody know any voodoo priests or priestesses? Well, you're you the one with the okay. this experience. Oh, yeah. Well, I just did a little one in my head. I went, <laughs> I'll get you, Bella. Pete, just to let you know, if you do all the stuff for the show in your head, it's not going to be as entertaining for the listeners <laughs> at home. You have to show your work, and as we've often said. <laughs> yeah. Thinking about people isn't cursing them as well. It's, I could, I could, sh- I could show you the work, and I've always got chicken bones on you're, me. You're a, <laughs> my goodness, you're always, <laughs> you're always, you're just essentially thinking about a dead man. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's well, not I'm that essentially thinking about to. a dead man. Yeah, yeah. So, so Pete's right. Pete's essentially refusing to answer the question. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I said I've already done it, so that's my curse. Oh, that's my you, footballing why curse. Not, something about Mike Ashley. Curse him in some way. All right, I'll curse. No, I won't. <laughs> well, you need, we need to get out of there. Nearly got involved. <laughs> you probably just thought it. Yeah. Can we yeah. Yeah. curse Don't. him later in the bath? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've cursed him many a time in yeah. the past. Come on, okay. Marcus, give us your answer. I'll do, shall I do the listeners' highlights as usual and you guys can chip in with some of your own afterwards? I mean, Does that work? Don't care, it was probably everybody's highlight, I'd imagine. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, you're wrong. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a lot of I mean, you, can ima- you, this podcast. you can imagine all you want, but you're wrong. Um, <laughs> Prove it. Um, but you get Marcus to catch up, will you? Um, <laughs> here's one from Ian McDonald. He says, got to be the clip of Diego Costa getting champagne in his eyes during the Chelsea <laughs> celebration, then trying to rinse it out with Lucasade, and then telling the camera to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't see that. That was fantastic. That is, that is perfect, Diego Costa. As that far as I know, he doesn't even really speak English that well. Yeah. So he's obviously learned the important words. He knows that one. Yeah. Because um, Fabric has <laughs> Famously, famous, famously sweared in the uh, post-match interview as well. Didn't yeah, he, he said football is fucking fantastic. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. right. So yeah, that was a good spot, Ian. Um, <laughs> Fuck off! But imagine with Diego Costa putting Lucas in his eyes to wash it out. He would then think that that was someone else's fault. Yeah. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> a physio, one of the physios will probably get fired for that. Uh-huh. Um, Matthew Innes, the guy earlier. Uh, well, we know that um, Tom Cruise will be supporting Juventus as he was at Atletico Madrid's new stadium and declared himself an Atleti fan. Okay. I've got beef with this. Go on. He's been spotted in the home end at the Bernabeu before. Has he? He has. I reckon he turned up and he and he forgot. He was handed the Atletico Madrid shirt and he's thinking, it's a bit, a bit of red in that. Normally it's all white, isn't it? Oh, wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he thinks it's a franchise like America Sports that's moved around. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> oh, you're, a, you're Atletico now. Does he think Juve are top guns? <laughs> 
Get out. I don't care if we're only two men. Get out. <laughs> it's risky business making a prediction at this stage. Have you written them yeah, these down? Have I what? All right. <laughs> <laughs> How many more have you got? Do you want to get, just get them out? Yeah. I, mean, I, know there's, I know there's dad jokes, but these are mummy jokes. Re- yeah, <laughs> nobody's that familiar. Nobody's that familiar. Real he's in the, the new fa- mummy film. I know film. he's in the new mummy Real film. Real have certainly got more than a few good men. <laughs> I'm having oh, that one. Yeah, no. it'll, it'll be hard for Juventus to win, Pete, but it won't be Mission Impossible. <laughs> you never know, Cristiano Ronaldo might have all the right moves. <laughs> Seriously, that's all I've got. I'm done yeah. now. Yeah, oh, I'm done. Right. Yeah, yeah. Blimey, Nick. Yeah. The Days of Thunder. Yeah. yeah. It's just, that's just saying the title of a film. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's pretty much what you just did, to be yeah, fair, I've, isn't I've, it? Been, I've been more creative then. I think the listeners will judge me on My that. Mate. There we go. Mm. You see, it, means, it that, does mean something. Um, it, w- it was the Champions League final in Cardiff. Real Madrid won four one. We we witnessed the first side to retain the Champions League trophy. We 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 didn't need to wait for this. Yeah, uh, mm. and I don't mm. mean the retaining. I meant the game because it was, of course, delayed by the Black Eyed Peas by three minutes. I feel fans of football everywhere will agree it was worth it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a girl at school whose favourite outfit, favourite artiste, favourite band were Jamiroquai. Yeah, mm. and I was watching the Black Eyed Black Eyed Peas, and I thought, do you reckon anyone? favourite band is the Black Eyed Peas imagine Sorry. that imagine the illness Pete have you got any <laughs> modern references what do you mean have you got anything the modern the Black Eyed Peas modern. yeah you work for one of the biggest radio stations in the country do you quite any... that old are they? come on come on no but it's not that bad I'm just saying sort of screwball scramble yeah I'm just saying that it's just a weird band to be really yeah, into like, and I did think like I know what you mean Black Eyed Peas mm. can't really be anyone's favourite band <laughs> no. I mean, people are they like, they're all right. Pete are they like the Alfie the same pet of music <laughs> yeah they are yeah. <laughs> they, they actually seem to get a decent reception though which yeah. is a stranger thing mm. I don't know I, do, I quite liked um, uh, Jonathan Wilson in one of these articles he was going crazy on Twitter yeah he, right, right through it was well this isn't going to start on time it, it, gonna, it didn't start on time well, he, he was right time. he was right he was, he was, going, he was thinking I've never seen him sign a minute about something and he and he once shared a train journey with me. Three hours. <laughs> he was animated <laughs> after it, I'll tell you. Um, down the police station. Um, he, in one of his articles, I love this, he said, quite why being the most important football match of the year isn't enough. Why it needs these in, uh, adornments is bewildering. After all, agree. this is a wonderful point. After all, concerts don't start with a quick game of five-a-side on the stage. <laughs> The, 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 is magnificent. the reason he's annoyed is because in 15 years' time, when he's continuing to write on the history of football, he knows he has to give him a mensch. Yeah. <laughs> it was a lot simpler back in the 70s. <laughs> I got a feeling, Jonathan. I got a feeling. Oh, 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 bro- broke a record with an assist when. So the way Portsmouth were doing terribly and they eventually got relegated but the away fans were singing going down, going down, going down then Pompey fans sung back so are we, so are we, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, this is a long one to settle in um, and it's basically uh, a man looking for a bit of advice. Okay. Steve, hi boys. Though this email is only sort of connected to football, uh, I thought your long history of being unofficial agony uncles to the football loving listeners might serve you in good stead <laughs> when dispensing advice. Basically, a close friend is getting married soon and me and his circle of friends and colleagues are all excited about a great man entering the next stage of this thing we call life. Anyway, we're all lambda here that although we hang out with this chap at least three times a week, text back and forth every single day, and although we're invited to the wedding itself, we were not invited to the stag do. At the stag do in question, they saw some comedy, they went to the football, and they also indulged in the time-honoured sport of laser tag. With the impending nutshells on the horizon, we are obviously upset about not being invited to Quasar Laser because he loved Quasar Laser and just wondered if the ramble had any advice. I don't want to be forced into a situation where I stand up and object in church, but I am more than willing to do so because my soul is in turmoil. Any guidance willingly accepted, Steve. P.S. The groom is a little hairy boy. (laughs) Very clever. (laughs) Steve. (laughs) That was Steve at hotmail.com. There's a hosting (laughs) article. Have the names been changed in that? Just to I, no, the no, 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 maybe, okay. yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no, right, no. They didn't mention who it was, to be honest, no, my name. No, 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 no. It would be nice to know, but I understand if we can't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely.